Today, we're going to talk about distances in cosmology. So why distances? Uh, cosmology as a theory um, is going to make predictions, and then we're going to test those predictions with observations to see if they're consistent with the theory, and hence see if we're on the right track in our understanding of the universe. And one of the most fundamental predictions that cosmology can make is distances versus redshift as predictions. All right, so how do distances matter? In cosmology, there are basically two kinds of observations. You're either gonna measure the brightness of something, and so how far away that object is uh, determines how bright it is or you might measure how big this object appears on the sky. And that angular size on the sky also depends upon the distance. And that distance um, is pretty straightforward and you know what it is in Euclidean space. However, that relationship between brightness and distance is not so straightforward in cosmology. And when you're dealing with an expanding universe or even an expanding warped universe. And so we're going to define two types of distances. And the first one is going to be the ang angular diameter distance. So the angular diameter distance. So let's start off in Euclidean space in Euclidean space. You know the relationship between distance and angle, but I'm just gonna go through it here. So you have some object far away and it has a proper size S. And we're going to observe this object from some distance away D, and from, from this person's perspective, let's put an eyeball over here, from this person's perspective, this object, which has a proper size S, subtends an angle theta on the sky. And this leads to the angle that this subtends is equal to the proper size of the object divided by the distance. This is what we mean by the angular diameter distance. It is the distance that you put in the denominator that gives you the angle of um, how this thing appears on the sky. All right, so in the Robertson-Walker metric, so let's go ahead and write down the interval for the Robertson-Walker metric. ds squared is equal to minus dt squared plus a squared dr squared plus l squared of r and then d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi squared. Since we're dealing with an angular diameter distance, well, we're going to consider um, at a constant time, so dt is zero, and this object has no extent in the dr direction. It's only in the d theta or d phi direction. So dr is zero. And we'll just simplify our coordinate system so that this object is oriented in the theta direction, not the phi direction. It just simplifies, so that's zero. All right, so now we're left with ds is equal to a of t times L of r d theta. And if we do an integral in the theta direction, we have that the proper size of this object is equal to a of t 
times L of R times theta. All right, so that's our relationship between uh, theta. And let's rewrite this. So up above, we had theta equals the proper divided by something, the proper size of the object divided by something. So this would be theta is equal to S, the proper size divided by A of T, L of R. All right, before we, and you notice that this, L is dimensionless, A has units of length, and so that combination has units of length, and we're gonna call that some sort of angular diameter distance. But before we do that, I'm gonna help you have some intuition as to what's going on here. All right, so imagine at, oops, imagine at time t, this is at time t, we have some rod, it has some length s, and uh, the, the photons leave the end of the rod, and they go in this direction, they leave in that direction in order to, if we extrapolate this forward, to end up at that place. But at some time later, at time t0, which is later, the universe has expanded. All right, here, here we are, here's this point. The universe has expanded. The photons arrive at us. It's the same angle that um, I drew over here. So it's the same angle on the left-hand side. The photons arrive at us and we have some angle theta there. And if I extrapolate backward, this is what this angle looks like. In the meantime, at today, the because the universe is expanded, the rod is actually over here. And at this time, if we were to draw straight lines from the ends of the rod, then we would get a different angle. So what we see today is how the photons arrive at us, but the angle at which the photons may uh, left the rod so that they would actually arrive at us was at a different angle than if you were to draw the straight lines um, as if you were looking at the rod today. It just takes some time for the photons to get to you. And so uh, drawing the lines today does not represent what you see on the sky. So just do the expansion of the universe you can get um, kind of an odd behavior of what the object looks like based upon how big you know it actually is and how far away it is today. All right, and so once again, T is equal to the time when photons left the object And that determines the angular size that you see today. All right, so once again, we have that theta, we just said is equal to S over A of T times L of R. And if we want to define theta to be the proper distance divided by some dA, which is the angular diameter distance, then we have that the angular diameter distance is defined to be A of t times L of r. And once again, L of r is equal to sine of r, k equals plus one, r, k equals zero, 
and a hyperbolic sine of r for k equals minus 1. OK, so let's, this is not quite a useful form yet. So we're going to, we're going to replace a of t with another expression. So we're going to use a of t divided by a of t zero. So a over a naught. So the size of the universe at some time in the past t divided by the size of the universe today is equal to one over one plus z. We can use this to rewrite a of t in d of a. So plugging this into d of a, we now have that d of a is equal to a of t naught times L of r divided by 1 plus z. Oops. Let's make this 1 plus z. There we go. OK, so that's, that's the angular diameter distance. And to get a little more intuition, let's uh, let's make some approximations. So for small z, what does dA equal for small z? And for this exercise, let's just assume that k equals zero. So we're in flat space and a flat expanding space. And this implies that L is equal to R. So now we have that D of A is equal to A of T zero times R divided by one plus C. In the video in which we derive the Hubble's law, we also, so last time, we also saw that in this small angle approximation, we have that C times Z is equal to H naught times A T zero times R. And notice we have that A T zero times R is equal to C times Z divided by H naught. And so in the limit of z is small, so z is less than 1, we have that dA is roughly equal to c over h naught times z over 1 plus z, right? dA is, uh, has that 1 plus z. Um, but in the small angle approximation, or the small z approximation, um, this just becomes c z over h naught. Okay, so that that's uh, that's what the angular diameter distance is: is c times z over h naught. Now z is a dimensionless number, and so the only thing that has dimensions here is c over h naught. This is called the Hubble distance. And it is a characteristic size in the universe. Roughly, um, since one over H naught is roughly the age of the universe and C uh, times that age gives you roughly the size of the universe. Um, or it gives you roughly this, the distance that light can travel in that time during the age of the universe. So it gives you roughly the observable size of the universe. So once again, one over H naught is roughly 
the age of the universe. And so therefore, C time, or times one over H naught is roughly equal to distance light travels over the age of the universe. Okay, so that's the characteristic size of the universe. So let's just, uh, let's just plot this. The angular diameter distance as a function of z, it is for low z, it's roughly a straight line where the slope of this is c over h naught. Now, it, later on in homework, you are going to derive what is this angular diameter distance for various cosmologies. And in general, for most reasonable cosmologies, you will find that this starts, this D over A starts to turn down. And then there's actually a maximum and it starts to go back down like this. And so when you, when you plug this into your formula for what does the object look like, right? So we plotting theta, which is once again is S over DA, then if, if DA were just um, proportional to Z as it is in the low Z limit, then you would get something like this. where this is proportional to one over Z. But instead what you get is you get something that tracks that initially. And you know, the object appears smaller with Z. This is Z, object appears smaller with Z. And at some point as Z gets larger, the object appears to be bigger again. And this, is, this effect is mostly due to the expansion of the universe. So if we go back up here to the definition of the angular diameter distance, uh, let's see, that one is for, so here. So we're looking at this one here. Um, you notice that the angular diameter distance uh, depends upon A and one over one plus Z. And the part, this part, this L of R is how the angular diameter distance is different based upon the curvature of the universe, but even in flat space, due to the expansion of the universe, we get that this DA, DA behaves differently than a normal distance in the Euclidean space in the angular diameter distance.